Right friends, welcome back to lecture part. This is 46th week from 9th to 15th November. Let us look at the highlights. The visit of the Prime Minister to the United Kingdom. India UK CEO forum was started functioning. The second important aspect is the deals worth 9 billion pounds were struck. And if you look at the success and failure of the Prime Minister's visit to UK, most important point is that there is some breakthrough in the counter-terrorism front, but not much on economic front. If you look at the other most important event, terror attacks in Paris, it raises several questions. Is Europe safe? Can Muslims in Europe live without any apprehensions or fear? Is the Syria crisis responsible for the instability across the world and the crackdown on black money is the most important aspect to prevent such a terror attack. These things we are going to discuss in detail. Another important aspect in the neighborhood is the historic elections in Myanmar, free and fair elections after 25 years. Aung San Suu Kyi, the Nobel Prize winner, became victorious with a massive mandate. BCCI, some measures are taken in the right direction. Now they realized the conflict of interest is dragging them down. GSAT-15 communication satellite basically for DTH channels was launched from Koru in French Guyana. You may ask where is French Guyana? French Guyana is the overseas territory of France situated in South America. One side it is Suriname, the other side it is Brazil. Right friends, look at the first and the foremost event, the Prime Minister's visit to United Kingdom. During the past 18 months, the Prime Minister visited around 30 countries and important aspects about uh, this visit is this uh, India UK CEO forum or you can call UK India CEO forum was uh, decided to be revived and this will be chaired by Jerry Grimstone the chairman of Standard Life and from the Indian side, it will be Cyrus Mistry, the chairman of Tata Group and 20 CEOs will be there on each side and six areas of focus are enlisted like uh, smart cities, healthcare, education and skills like that. Six areas were identified for more uh, action and this uh, UK India's CEO forum will have regular meetings from now onwards and this was started when the Prime Minister visited United Kingdom and if you look at the other events of the Prime Minister before going into it I would like to tell you a few points Dr. Manmohan Singh visited United Kingdom in the year 2006 there are around 15 lakh people of Indian origin living in the UK and in view of the visit of the Prime Minister, the newspapers in United Kingdom are highly critical about the human rights record of uh, Sri Narendra Modi when he was the Gujarat Chief Minister because at that time he was not allowed to visit some countries and that was the main focus of British newspapers when the Prime Minister visited the United Kingdom. If you look at other aspects, bilateral talks were held between both the countries. The Prime Minister visited the recently installed Mahatma Gandhi statue near Parliament Square. Addressed in the Guildhall London to the citizens of London, he stated Checkers Court is the official retreat of the United Kingdom Prime Minister. Then he addressed around 50,000 to 60,000 Indian diaspora at the Wembley Stadium. Unveiled Basaveswara statue. Basaveswara is the 12th century Indian philosopher. The other important aspect is the inaugurated Ambedkar Memorial. Recently, Maharashtra government purchased a building where 
डॉक्टर बी आर अम्बेडकर स्टेट वेन ही वॉज स्टडिंग इन लंडन स्कूल ऑफ इकोनॉमिक एट द टाइम डॉक्टर बी आर अम्बेडकर स्टेड इन ए बिल्डिंग एंड दैट बिल्डिंग वॉज परचेज बाय महाराष्ट्र गवर्नमेंट रिसेंटली फॉर ए वैल्यू ऑफ थर्टी वन क्रोर्स ऑफ रुपीज एंड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इनागरेटेड द अम्बेडकर मेमोरियल इन दैट बिल्डिंग and at the same time the prime minister visited the jaguar land rover factory which is owned by tata group so these are the major events when he visited the uk and if you look at the decisions of uh, economy that means major economic decisions deals worth around 9 billion pounds were struck light source will invest 2 billion pounds to design and manage 3 gigawatt of solar power during the next 5 years then opg power ventures will invest around 3 billion pounds for creating 4200 megawatt of solar and thermal power vodafone vodafone is the uk based company it is the 100% british multinational vodafone has got its telephone services in our country and vodafone will invest 1.3 billion pounds for upgrading its infrastructure here and the other important aspect is kings college hospital will establish 11 institutions in india and the first one will come up at chandigarh and if you look at uh, indian companies in uk basically india will issue government backed rupee denominated bonds in london to fund railway projects and please don't forget when rupee denominated bonds are issued abroad now this became a norm rupee denominated bonds these are called masala bonds that means people will raise money abroad previously they used to raise money abroad mostly in american dollars but nowadays masala bonds uh, became common and people are subscribing to rupee denominated bonds abroad because of the sole reason the stability of indian currency the indian currency is much stable in comparison to other currencies of developing countries or emerging markets that is the reason why these masala bonds are becoming successful so please don't forget masala bonds are rupee denominated bonds issued abroad and to fund railway projects india will issue rupee denominated bonds abroad s bank will list green bonds of 330 million pounds through mtn you may ask what is mtn mtn is a medium term note the commonly used term for medium term bonds abroad 5 to 10 year duration they are called medium term note this is the term normally in vogue abroad you may ask what is green bond green bond is that the bond the money which is the pooled up by issuing such bonds will be utilized for renewable energy or green energy projects and government wants to ensure deepening of bond market that is the reason why hdfc will issue 750 million dollar rupee denominated bonds for trading in london stock exchange then bharti airtel will issue 500 million pounds sterling bonds for listing in london stock exchange then sbi will open two new uk branches so this is on economic front and mostly the firms came forward to invest in india in renewable energy projects including telecom that is vodafone and india wants to deepen the rupee denominated bonds abroad so this is the main crux of this economic decisions taken and finally you may ask one pertinent question whether the visit can be viewed as successful or failure you can say there is a mixed result of uh, narendra modi's visit positive aspects if you see enhanced cooperation on fighting terror groups the joint declaration says enhanced cooperation in fighting terror groups and for the first time please remember the joint declaration named let lashkar e toiba and hizbul mujahideen as terror groups second important point is both the countries jointly pushed for 
యునైటెడ్ నేషన్స్ కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ కన్వెన్షన్ ఆన్ ఇంటర్నేషనల్ టెర్రరిజం అండ్ ప్లీజ్ డోంట్ ఫర్గెట్ యునైటెడ్ నేషన్స్ ఈజ్ హెట్ టు డిఫైన్ వాట్ ఈస్ టెర్రరిజం అండ్ దెర్ ఈస్ ఎ నీట్ ఫర్ ఇస్యూయింగ్ కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ కన్వెన్షన్ ఆన్ ఇంటర్నేషనల్ టెర్రరిజం అదర్వైజ్ ది ఇన్సిడెంట్స్ లైక్ ప్యారిస్ విల్ నాట్ ఎండ్ థర్డ్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్ ఈజ్ several splinter groups are sheltered in united kingdom they are fermenting trouble in jammu and kashmir and punjab several insurgency groups or you can say several splinter groups fermenting trouble in j and k and punjab are situated or based in uk and the prime minister narendra modi raised this issue let us hope some breakthrough in this regard also and if you look at uh, some negative side first and the foremost is the bilateral trade that is export import front export import front put together is hardly 14 billion dollars and the other important aspect is it is the falling for the past 4 5 years and in the year 2010 it was decided to increase bilateral trade to 30 billion dollars but unfortunately this trade is decreasing not much action on the trend the second failure you can say is indian firms or indian companies indian students they are facing trouble of getting british visas british visa regime is not liberalized sometimes indian software companies indian students are facing trouble in getting british visas that is another biggest hurdle which could not be cleared during this visit third is not much action on defense deals or strategic issues so this is the final word on the narendra modi's visit of united kingdom right friends let us move on to the issues around the world most unfortunate event the worst ever event after world war 2 took place in paris and 129 people lost their lives out of which majority were lost in bataclan concert and overall gun and bomb attacks took place at the six places and the most unfortunate part is one two side bomb attack took place in front of a stadium where the president of france francois holland was watching a match fortunately nothing happened in that stadium and at six places total attack took place 129 people were killed and a national state of emergency was imposed for the first time since 2005 they are most akin to mumbai attacks and one of the seven attackers was identified as the frenchman of algerian origin and some of the citizens of france are with isis in syria the president called it as an act of war right so under these circumstances i would like to analyze the two important before going into it several unanswered questions are the first and the foremost is is europe safe how long the western countries meddle in the affairs of uh, middle east make the countries unstable and overall it is affecting the safety of the world as a whole then another important point is uh, does the muslims in france feel safe and live without any apprehensions because Nowadays, unfortunately, terrorism is linked to religion in some quarters. Terrorism and religion should be separated. They should not be linked. Terrorist elements may be there in any religion. Maybe Christianity, Hinduism, Muslim, whatever it is. But unfortunately, the radicalization is now being attributed to one particular religion across the world. That is the real irony of the situation. And the other important aspect is, what strategy the west will adopt to resolve the issues of the middle east 
and several refugees from Syria migrating to Europe are Muslims. Whether the European countries will take the refugees and will treat them as normal citizens or not, that is the biggest question. And the Schengen zone, Schengen zone means that is within Europe, several countries are signatories to this Schengen zone. Around 25 countries are there. That means with one single visa, you can travel free movement across all these countries. Whether that will continue or restrictions will be there. So these are the questions unanswered. And the next important aspect I would like to tell you is, two things are primarily responsible. One is flawed Syria policy. The second important aspect is, the world is not able to curb black money proliferation. These two things are most important when we look at terrorism. Not only Syria. Instability caused by any country in any nation will ultimately result in terrorism across the world. And if you look at Syria, in the year 2011, pro-democracy movements took place in Syria as usual which occurred in other countries like Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Bahrain. It occurred in many countries like that pro-democracy movement started in 2011, popularly known as Arab Spring. And it started initially in Tunisia and subsequently spread to many countries. Syria is one of them. And there the president is Bashar al-Assad. And he belongs to Shia Alawite community. And after the pro-democracy protests broke out in that country, there were allegations that Bashar al-Assad suppressed the agitation with iron hand by using chemical weapons, by attacking civilians. There were so many allegations against him and certain countries supported him. One such country is Iran. Iran is basically a Shia-dominated country. Iran and Shia militia organization that is the Hezbollah, these completely supported Syrian president. I am not going into the details whether the Syrian president has done wrong or right. I am explaining the situation. He belongs to Shia Alawite community and Shia dominated countries, especially Iran and Hezbollah, they supported Syrian president straight away. And recent times, Russian president Vladimir Putin supported Syrian president and he sent his armed forces to assist Bashar al Assad. So, this is the group one. Group one is Bashar al-Assad of Syria, then Iran, then Hezbollah, that is the militia group of Shia Muslims, and Vladimir Putin of Russia. This is on one side. The second group is moderate opposition parties in Syria who want Bashar al-Assad to resign. These moderate opposition parties want Bashar al-Assad to resign and now these moderate opposition parties are supported by the United States and West as well as Saudi Arabia and its friends. And please don't forget, Saudi Arabia is a Sunni dominated country. This is the head of a grouping of a Sunni community in Muslims. And Barack Obama, USA is the staunch supporter of these moderate opposition in Syria. They are sending arms and ammunition to these opposition parties to fight Bashar al-Assad. So, please remember carefully, Bashar al-Assad is supported by Shia-dominated countries along with Russia. Then the opposition parties supported by Sunni-dominated countries along with USA and West. And by taking advantage of the conflict in this country, the third group, ISIS, spread its tentacles, occupying almost one-third of Syria and some parts of Iraq, adjoining Iraq, right? So, this is the flawed policy adopted by United States of America and its friends. The main focus of United States of America is Bashar al-Assad should go away. And with that motto, they are supporting opposition parties by sending weapons and these weapons are going into the hands of ISIS. So, three groups fighting and no one knows who is fighting whom. One group is led by the President Bashar al-Assad. The second group is modern opposition parties supported by United States and West, supported by Saudi Arabia and friends. 
and looking at the vacuum established because of this fight isis established its tentacles and so far kurds are able to attack isis kurds are able to control isis but turkey wants to suppress kurds so it is total geopolitics which is destabilizing this middle east so under these circumstances terror attacks are bound to increase three groups are fighting one is bashar al assad and his friends second is the moderate opposition and their friends third is isis under these circumstances definitely terror attacks in the world are bound to increase and recently sensing the situation because the terror is causing destabilization across the world now white house released a statement mr obama and mr putin agreed on the need for syrian led syria owned political transition previously white house says bashar should go away but now it says obama and mr putin agreed on the need for syrian led and syrian owned political transition which would be preceded by un mediated negotiations let us hope some breakthrough in this regard right now second issue i would like to tell you please look into this people there should be proper steps to control black otherwise this the black money proliferation through hawala route under invoicing over invoicing that means export imports black money transactions then hawala route then shell companies for name sake they are companies these are all conduits of black money and black money flows are anywhere between 2% to 5% of total gdp of the world unless countries implement watertight laws to control black money this terror will go on proliferating because of the reason terrorists get funding when there is a black money proliferation in the world there is lot of black money proliferation across the world and part of it is going into the hands of terrorists so i have listed out these are the steps to control black money first is implement uniform watertight laws second is have coordinated effort to control shell companies they are namesake companies nothing happens there but only on paper it will happen and they are acting as conduits for black money the third is illegal trading in exports and imports people write more exports more imports less exports less imports so has to act as conduit for black money money goes across the boundaries through this export import trade and water tight laws are required for controlling these things next hawala transaction especially some countries are keeping a blind eye to these hawala transactions that is unfortunate aspect unless the black money is controlled these terror attacks will not stop so most important point is don't meddle in the affairs of other country if you are meddling in the affairs of other country please bring it to the logical conclusion now libya is in trouble afghanistan is in trouble yemen is in trouble syria is in trouble this is because of meddling by west and other countries and black money proliferation is to be controlled and at the same time stability of each and every country is important for controlling terrorism across the world look at the next most important event the historic elections in myanmar aung san suu kyi the winner she is the daughter of revolutionary aung san Aung San was killed in 1947. She is the daughter of revolutionary leader of Myanmar. And if you look at Myanmar, it was part of India, but there was a peasant and student agitation somewhere in 1930s against the British policies. They felt that the policies were favoring India. That's why Burma was separated by British in 1937 from India and subsequently Aung San the father of Aung San Suu Kyi fled to China during second world war and Japanese occupied this country and subsequently British reoccupied the country in 1945 after the end of second world war and this country got independence in 1948 but subsequently during the past 5 decades military rule is common in this country military established their impact in the rule of the country and the other important uh, or the biggest problem in this country is there are several ethnic groups operating in this country 
and they have given the facts the population is around 5 crores buddhism is the religion naipeda is the capital currency is kyat and voters are around 30 million seats are 664 and elections were conducted in one single day the most important factor india should learn from myanmar is and aung san suu kyi won the first free general elections in 25 years in the year 1990 elections were held aung san suu kyi became the winner aung san suu kyi is the nobel prize winner she was put under house arrest in the year 1991 subsequently she was released and now in the elections she already got 348 out of 664 seats please look into this picture myanmar has got border with indian four states one is arunachal pradesh then nagaland manipur mizoram these four states have got border with myanmar there are 664 seats in parliament upper house 224 reserved for military 56 and lower house 440 reserved for armed forces 110 that means 25% of the seats are reserved for military and this national league for democracy should get two third of the total elected seats so as to get majority in 664 member parliament and now aung san suu kyi crossed that hurdle also and i would like to ask a pertinent question myanmar is it true democracy please look into these four points the constitution was drafted by military Second is Article Fifty Nine F says anyone with the foreign children is ineligible to become president. This was inserted keeping in view Aung San Suu Kyi because Aung San Suu Kyi has got uh, two children because her husband was British citizen. Then twenty five percent of the seats are reserved for military, and commander in chief that means military will nominate the heads of three powerful ministries that is interior, defence, and border security. So. Looking at these things, it is clearly evident that there is no democracy in Myanmar. The democracy is quite minimum, and in recent times there was some relaxation. After 2010, there is a quasi-civilian government was formed with minor reforms, and Aung San Suu Kyi's house arrest ended. Several political prisoners were released. media restrictions were reduced trade unions formation was allowed some sectors like telecom were opened for foreign investment so these were the changes brought during the past 4 5 years but if you look at the things in overall perspective the country has got a limited democracy and finally i would like to ask because aung san suu kyi will head the government if not as president because she cannot become president as per this present constitution but she will call the shots i have already told you 59f of the constitution debar song san suu kyi to become president because of the reason she got uh, two children through the british citizen that means her husband was british citizen that's why she is not eligible to become the president so under these circumstances i would like to pose the challenges please look into this the challenges are myanmar is one of the poorest countries in asia and only 3% of the population get socio economic schemes from the government second important point is development is taking place without consideration for ecology myanmar is the third highest rate of deforestation in the world third important point as i have already told you there are several regional groups that is ethnic groups fighting with army recently some of the groups signed agreement with the government but major groups like wa and kachin have not come to the negotiating table so to fight or to solve the problem of these ethnic groups is the real problem for aung san suu kyi and fourth point is constitution was drafted by military does it lead to true democracy is the most important and pertinent question the last one from indian perspective is in the year 1995 myanmar undertook operation golden bird the name of the program operation golden bird this was intended to dismantle terrorist organizations of northeast operating from myanmar can myanmar cooperate to dismantle such organizations which belongs to northeast region because northeast region has got several insurgent groups and they have their base 
in Myanmar whether Myanmar government will cooperate to start an operation like Operation Golden Bird to dismantle terrorist organizations in Myanmar and these are the important points and last but not the least is plight of Rohingya Muslims is very important. Can the government do something? That is the pertinent question. They have no citizenship, no voting rights. They cannot contest the elections. They are treated as slaves. They are second class citizens in the country and they are migrating to countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand and can Aung San Suu Kyi do something for the plight of these Rohingya Muslims? That is the million dollar question in addition to these uh, challenges. And can she control the vocal Buddhist groups who are against these Ro Rohingya Muslims? So these are the challenges which she is required to face. Right friends, let us go first. Major relaxation in FDI norms. FDI is foreign direct investment. That is different from foreign portfolio investment. Two things I would like to tell you. FDI can come through direct route or government route. Automatic route or government route. If it is automatic route, subject to the limits, nobody else approval is required. But if it is through government route, it requires the approval of FIPB, Foreign Investment Promotion Board, that is under the Ministry of Finance. And who gives the circular with regard to FDA? Please don't forget, DIPP issues the guidelines. DIPP is Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry that releases the guideline with regard to FDA and FDA can come in two routes. One is automatic route, the second one is government route. If it is through automatic route, nobody else approval is required and if it is through government route, each and every case is to be approved by FIPB. FIPB is Foreign Investment Promotion Board that is under the Ministry of Finance. The major changes are 35 changes were made across 15 sectors. FDI policy in construction is much eased. Individual sectoral caps were removed and more proposals were kept through automatic route. And each and every proposal which is to be approved by FIPB, the financial limit or monetary limit is increased from 3000 crores of rupees to 5000 crores of rupees. So, these are the major changes and if you look at the construction sector, lot of things were eased here. Minimum floor area requirement was there previously 20,000 square meters and minimum 5 million dollar capital requirement was there. These two were taken out and they can exit after completing 3 years period and lock-in period is 3 years. Whether the completion of the project is there or not that is immaterial but they can exit after three years lock-in period. So, lot of liberalization took place in construction sector. Second is banking, sectoral limits of FPIs and FDA are removed. Sectoral limits of FPI, FDA, this is removed. That means up to 74 percent permitted. There is no sectoral limit. Previously, there was sectoral limit for FPIs under 74 percent. Now, that is removed. And defense sector up to 49 percent is kept under automatic route and beyond 49 percent it will be considered by FIPB. Previously 100 percent FDI was allowed in tea plantations, but now it is extended to coffee, rubber, cardamom and other plantations. Then in FM channels as well as news channels, 49 percent FDI is allowed through FIPB route and non-news channels 100 percent FDI is allowed, entertainment channels 100 percent FDI is allowed through automatic route, right. So, these are the changes and during the 47th week news analysis, we are going to discuss in detail about what is the difference between FPA, FDA and what are the total rules we are going to discuss news analysis of 47th week, please listen to them. 
right friends the yuan will become the fifth currency in sdr basket sdr special drawing rights you may ask what is sdr sdr is special drawing rights this is a reserve fund and functions as an emergency reserve to supplement exchange reserves of the member countries of imf imf has got member countries and for their member countries this sdr will act as a reserve fund as an emergency reserve and members are allocated these sdrs and they can borrow against these sdrs previously in sdrs only four currencies were there united states dollar japanese yen euro and british pound but now the fifth currency will be yuan this imf voted for including yuan or renminbi you can say as the fifth currency in sdr basket and to become reserve currency three things are to be satisfied one is the currency must be stable second is it must be widely used and third is exchange rate should be market determined it should not be determined by the country so if these the three things are satisfied the currency is eligible to become reserve currency under sdr now yuan will join united states dollar japanese yen british pound and euro to become the fifth currency under special drawing rights of imf right friends so this is big boost for chinese currency because now people have option to subscribe to yuan to diversify the foreign exchange reserves in addition to the four currencies which are already available under sdr basket right friends sports and games BCCI some measures were taken in the right direction Shashank Manohar the new president of BCCI is firmly behind this conflict of interest you may ask what is conflict of interest i will explain you with an example if you are in the selection panel for chennai super kings if you are in the selection panel of chennai super kings and at the same time if you are owning shares in delhi daredevils that is conflict of interest your ownership is there in delhi daredevils and you are in the selection panel for selecting players for chennai super kings then conflict of interest will come that's why this conflict of interest in recent times dragged bcci badly and in view of this he took several decisions the first one is former high court chief justice ap shah will act as first ethics officer or you can say first ombudsman and several replacements were also made in view of conflict of interest and please don't forget shashank manohar took over as chairman of icc from n srinivasan so a step in the right direction this conflict of interest dragged down bcca badly in recent times look at the last one miscellaneous gsat 15 launched from koro in french guyana what is french guyana french guyana is the overseas territory of france that is france territory that is overseas territory situated in northern part of south america and abutting north atlantic ocean one side the suriname the other side it is brazil and one side it is north atlantic ocean and this launch facility koru is situated adjacent to north atlantic ocean and here gsat 15 was launched and the weight is 3164 kg and it is going to replace insat 3a and 4b space crafts and gsat's 24 ku band transponders this ku band is in the range of 12 to 18 gigahertz of electromagnetic spectrum that is primarily used for 
this uh, satellite communication that is broadcasting. For broadcasting, you are very well aware about uh, DTH channels. This uh, DTH channels uh, will lease the space in this KU band. KU band is 12 to 18 gigahertz of uh, electromagnetic spectrum and these uh, DTH players will lease this band and at present uh, sufficient transponders are not available and they are uh, leasing from foreign satellites. Now India launched this uh, GSAT 15 and it will mainly cater for DTH services of Doordarshan and other private broadcasters. Right? Remaining things I have given in this PPT. And with this, let us conclude lecture part of 46th week and please listen to the gold schemes in news analysis and features. Have a nice day. Please listen to all other modules. Thank you.